Good morning and welcome to 7 at 7. So glad to have you with me this morning. We're going to have a great day today. We get to look a little bit about heaven. Um, the Bible paints just an amazing picture, but our world has painted such a different picture. Um, and we want to make sure that the, what we're looking forward to it because we see what the Bible paints as a picture. So we're going to get to that in just a minute, but in the meantime, hop in the chat, say hi, let us know that you're there, that you're watching, how we can pray with you. Um, if you've got some prayer requests, post those, and then look for somebody's prayer request and let them know that you're praying for them. So, you know, type out a prayer, put in a praying emoji, something, but just let them know and actually take the time to pray for them. And then we'd love to celebrate with you, so post those prayers after they get answered. Let us know and go, hey, celebrating what God's done. This is who was healed, this is who uh, recovered, this is who um, was provided for, right? relationships that were restored, whatever it may be. But it's time for us to get rolling this morning. So, this morning we're looking at the at heaven. And I mentioned yesterday just that, that heaven is portrayed by the world as this boring place, clouds, cross-dressing, and um, you know, just wearing, wearing a robe and a harp and just it's, it's not the this grand picture, but what the Bible paints as a picture is incredible. In fact, the Bible says that we're going to spend eternity not dancing on a cloud, but on a new earth. And when we look at a new earth, it uses the term earth and then begins to spell out some of the differences because earth is one of the best spots to get a picture of what heaven will be like. See, earth has some amazing things and you can go and you can find... Um, all sorts of pictures of people just whether that's oceans um, and beautiful beaches or mountains or the lush green valleys in the mountain valleys there that are just amazing but when you look at earth and you look at the finest parts of earth and you look at earth without sin without death without pain and you go just the the best of earth it's amazing and this is the picture that it paints in fact it says that there'll be a new heaven revelation chapter 21 and that on this new heaven, that God will be with man, man will be with God, they will be his people, and he will be their God. And it's going to be this beautiful, beautiful thing. And so often people are like, well, I don't know what I would do. And I just respond with, do you realize that it was God who made the waves to surf? Do you realize that God's the one who made trees to climb? Do you realize that he's the one who made the mountains? That he's the one who made all of this incredible stuff that you want to, to run and to explore. And then in the Bible, it says that we're going to rule and reign with him. See, God never gave up on his original plan. If you look in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he says, Let us make man in, in our own image and in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth. And this is, this is his plan. And then we messed it up with sin. But as you look throughout the Bible, he sets things right. And when we get to the end, he fulfills what was always his plan, was to, to rule and reign with us on a beautiful, perfect earth. And it's going to be incredible. And I, I begin to look and in Isaiah chapter 11, there's a prophecy that has not been fulfilled. And it gives you a glimpse that's just really, really cool. Um, it goes through in, in verse 6. <clears throat> it says, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion, um, fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze to their young, shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Okay, so I read that, and I just think that's incredible. Um, and it, it, it honestly kind of reminds me of uh, almost like a Narnia, just this, this beautiful picture of these, these animals that have been changed by knowing God. That their very nature, where the lion no longer tears and rips apart, but is kind and gentle. Um, where, where there'll be a heaven where we can run and play with these different animals, where all these different things that used to 
produce harm, that used to produce death, are going to produce life. That we're going to get to spend time feasting, because the Bible talks about there being a feast in heaven, just an absolute feast, where they'll be eating. It talks about there being rivers and streams that flow from the throne of God. It talks about there being this, this peace. It talks about this beautiful city with streets that are made of gold. And it, it goes through and it lays all of this out. But so often our picture is just boring sitting. Or maybe you've been told it's just going to be a worship set forever. And if we're honest, any one thing forever sounds tedious. But we're going to be in his presence and we'll get to worship. And then we'll get to run and to play and we'll get to honor God and to use the gifts and the skills that he's given us. We're going to rule and reign with him. There'll be mountains to climb. When God made Adam and Eve, and he, he had fellowship with them. He walked with them in the cool of the day. But they didn't just stand there doing one thing. He said, you know, here, here's the Garden of Eden. I want you to tend and keep it. Genesis 2.15. And he gave them a job. And they looked after this and they got to work in this beautiful environment. It wasn't until after sin that work became um, a burden, that work became, um, then, it, then it was like, hey, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to do this. Before of it, this work produced joy. In, the, in heaven, it's gonna be this amazing and beautiful place and the tasks and the jobs that we get to do are gonna produce joy and fulfillment. And we're gonna get to honor God and to use all of the different skills and sets. When it talks about going to heaven, it talks about someone being gathered to their people in this spot where there's gonna be unity, where there's gonna be fellowship. It's not being isolated on a cloud, but literally getting to be with all of God's children. I look forward to seeing some of the heroes in the Bible and meeting them and asking them questions. Going, hey, what was it like when you faced Goliath? Hey, what was it like in the lion's den? Did they, um, were they, did they like stay away from you and just like, was there an angel standing between you or were they just kind? Did you cuddle up with them for the night to stay warm? Like, what was it like? Like there's gonna be so much cool things as we meet people in heaven and get to, to fellowship with them and to hear what God did in their life, to see all the spots that God did in our life, to run and to play in, in mountains and valleys and to swim in, um, in seas that were that are amazing with animals that are kind. It's gonna, it's gonna be incredible. But I just wanna encourage you that it is going to be awesome and a place filled with joy in his presence is fullness of joy. And we have so much to look forward to. But it's time for us to do our confessions. So go ahead and join me as we confess who we are in Christ. Say, I am a child of God. I don't have a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. God is my healer and redeemer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I resist the devil and he flees from me. My prayers are powerful and effective. God, I thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers. And I pray that you would do your will in and through us, that we could be your hands and feet. God, that you would give us a picture of who you are, that we could understand the greatness of you. That just as it says in, in Isaiah, God, that it would change our nature and it would mold us to, into your image. God, that we could have an image, that we could see the glorious inheritance and the future that you have for us, and that we could live with our eyes fixed on you, that it would, it would overflow in love and grace from us. God, that it would overflow with compassion toward those around us, that it would overflow with self-control, that the fruit of the Spirit would be produced in us as we fix our eyes on you. God, I ask that you would have your way in our homes, in our marriages, in our workplace, God, in our schools, everywhere that we go, that you would be honored and that we could overflow with your presence. And we thank you for protection. We ask that you would do a work inside of Afghanistan, God, that you would protect people, God, that you would soften the hearts of the Taliban, God, that you would begin to break that regime and what they're doing and the, the ways they're persecuting and hurting people. God, that things would be healed and restored, that people would be protected. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, be blessed. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Hope to see you guys tomorrow for 7 at 7.